Please note that this video contains spoilers for the subject and the series and or franchise leading up to this entry. I either have or will cover other parts of this franchise and this video either is or will be linked below. I'm not going to restate here what I did or will say in the other video. These videos get long enough as it is. Put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam-pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. I got this either as a present or I got it on discount, so I did not pay very much money for this and am thus not bitter on account of that. Married with Children Season 5 Thoughts. There we go. And I start with the intro. Yeah, this is the season. Yeah, in the middle of the fifth season, Marcy awakens next to Jefferson Darcy and discovers that she's now married to him. This is the first appearance of Al's favorite show, Psycho Dad, and the first mention of his four touchdowns in a single game. And the rest of this section is going to be completely unrelated to Married with Children. The abridged script of Mother is hilarious and spot on. And the rest of this is going to be political. I really appreciate hashtag me too. The only way we'll ever deal with sexual harassment and rape is by making it clear how many it happens to and by victims getting to talk about it in a supportive environment. Sooner or later, most of the callous and different men will realize it has or could happen to a woman they care about. You know, a family member, romantic partner. If they are capable of loving someone who has a vagina, other than physically. And of course, some idiots have to victim blame. My Bialik, I used to think more highly of you. And I have a ton of sympathy for the women sexually assaulted and raped in Hollywood. The men who knew and didn't do much, I have a really time, hard time forgiving. The women, all women, always try to determine if their actions will make them be cast out. Especially if it's sexual, whether they had a say in the matter, whether it's too sexual or not sexual enough. The men should have taken action. They had a much greater chance of their career surviving. And Trevor Noah pointed out that after he made the bad call to the widow, Trump had the demeanor of a pouty child. Cannot wait for Infinity War. Excuse me, putting my phone on silent. There we go. Will follow the sun. And this is ranked 82, which I pretty much agree with. We have another great season opener. Life is good. No takers. So Kill has graduated and Bud is now a senior. No one actually lives here. You didn't know I was gone? I am what I was. Oh good. The, oh god, the self-help BS is intolerable. Except for you and the dog. Well, gee, honey, what did you think you were of us? <laughs> Are we there yet? I love the TV guide reading and quoting throughout this entire episode. I love Al's empty threats. 
and his singing, his awful, awful singing. And they all sing, and Al's strangling the guy, and Paige starts fighting the wife, and the kids join in. And they go back to fighting once the cars stop moving again. Great choreography on the fight, too. It's it's one of those things you have, you know, yeah, both, both families have two kids. Two kids, two parents, for eight people fighting at the same time. You know, in frame, doing something that doesn't hurt them but looks like it could. You know, and it's it's the one take. You know, if... if one of the eight, excuse me, if even one of the eight people involved, like, you know, mess up even briefly, even slightly, they have to do it over, so, yeah. And they try to calm them back down, and Kel can't think of one. Alabama, Daddy, R. About five hours of that is what you missed, Peg. And Kel starts crying like an infant. <laughs> Great speech, Al. No, really. Season four also had a Labor Day episode. You know, it, it was really important to the the people. Yeah. Al, we have not moved an inch in two hours. Peg, I can hear that in our bedroom. Now just shut up and let me enjoy myself. I could do that in my bedroom too, honey. I'm not gonna let you ruin this for me, Peg. Yep, this is my vacation and I'm having fun. I'm loving this. Move, move, I can't take it anymore. Oh god, you're killing me. <laughs> and he burrows his head in the wheel. We're gonna go where people pretend to want to go when they can't afford to go someplace good. We're gonna see America. We take no map, we'll follow the sun, stay in cheap motels and steal what we need along the way. We go west past the cheese factories where the air is fresh, the sky is big, and a man can still kill his dinner with his car. Guys, tomorrow we put the pedal to the metal and we ride the wind. Gee, Al, I think you could slow down. My hair is just whipping in the wind. He's not scaring you, is he, kids? Sorry, Mom, I couldn't hear you over the roar of the engine. Come on, leave Daddy alone. I mean, how could he possibly know that be a traffic jam on Labor Day? Shut up. Everybody, I have an announcement. Your happiness sickens me. Everyone but me is looking at good times, but for me it's been one long, continuous year since I got married. Actually, one long month. Hell you, Aaron. The fuse is lit and the fire is on. Burn, baby, burn. Come on, kids, we can still see Mark Spitz and Greg Luganis in swim gyms. It's a story about synchronized swimmers who solve crimes in their spare time. I love how many of them are about, you know, they solve crimes. That, that really was a ridiculous trend. Al with Kelly. This is ranked 79, and I place it about there, yes, as well. I think we have Monte Cristo's run. <laughs> Why was I not included? Maybe because of the first sign of trouble you turn on them. I meant two beers for you and none for me. <laughs> I'm three. I almost left you on top of the car, oh dear god. I love Psycho Dad, and one of Pamela Anderson's first roles. I'm sick. Wolf, you cry. Now I can go. I'll give you a tip. Yeah. Pizza Boy is the voice of J.C. Denton. 
Your fever shot right past your IQ. And we put and laugh, and you look sorry and tired and sad. Yes, my change there was intentional. And for the lack of one condom, like the seconds you have left to live. Please. Okay. I love Al's bedtime story. Al, Hercules Bundy. And she's whipping her hair back and forth. And him banging his hands on the bed like an infant is hilarious. And he tosses the bell. What do you want? As sexist and gross it is, the ending joke is set up well. He keeps having sexual dreams about women. Kel keeps interrupting them frequently with the bell. And your mind does sometimes conjure up images you don't like when you're really ill, you know. As far as I understand, the, the image of the... You know, the, the whole Terminator thing originated with James Cameron having a really bad fever and having these just ridiculous nightmares. And one of the images there was the metal skeleton rising from the fire. And he built the rest of the movie around that, in part setting it in what was then present day, because he couldn't afford to set the whole movie in the future. And, you know, Al just needs someone to push him off the roof into some water. He'll wake up. Su casa. His casa. And this is ranked 179. I think I'd rank it at least 25 higher than that. Just paying bills, nothing that concerns us. I think we could all do without War Daddy. Hey, War Daddy is awesome. And Kel was in an action flick car chase. Then I have to do it myself. That's the problem with America today. We're suing. Whoa, Bundy. Ah, Dr. George Brothers. A jillion dollars, Al. You expect to make as much as Trump claims he's worth? <laughs> Fellow brother woman. I'm one of you, America. Blind like the mighty oak. And she points them out. <laughs> right after she's been like, you really think I'm going to fall for that? I'm blind. Like a thief in the night. 40 feet. Oh god, you want to hear something funny? This car phone lay over at my house and a policeman came over and asked me what car I thought it came from. The Mercedes or the Dodge? He thought it could be yours. What's that? A woman across town needs a 7 triple E? I'm on my way. Whoever thought seeing an accident like that could be that much fun? It's amazing. Your Dodge with a high blue book value of $70 sliced right through that crop tower like toast. I'm telling you, it's time like, like these. I'm proud to be an American. I, I love the fly and then tapeworm thing. How was your day, Snuckum? Oh, fine, fine. Just me cruising around, listening to the oldie station at 1500 watts. Made a lot of new friends. Take uh, Officer Lewis, for example. Unfortunately, I couldn't hear his siren at first, but luckily police cars are now equipped with rammers that gently eased me into the rail. Luckily, the cop liked Oldie, so he beat me with his nice sticks to the tune of Hey Jude. They wrote me 18 tickets, including one for bleeding on his pad. How was your day? Hello, gyms, fish, chips, and insurance. How much would it cost to add my son to the plan? How old? Let me see. Bud, how old are you? 
16, Dad. He's 16. What? If you think I'm going to pay that much, you're as stupid as those cats you trap and call too. Now. Seriously, Jim, I need to ask, is this the best you can do for a lifetime friend? Someone who did not tell the police what your catch of the day really was? <laughs> if you want to be that way, you can take your insurance and stuff it, all of it. There, Al Bundy takes guff from no one. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Are they calling him chicken? Oh, hi, Mark. Al, aren't you worried about being uninsured? Hey, we don't need insurance. The car isn't worth more than a hundred bucks with both kids in it. The Unnatural. This is ranked 233. Yeah, I guess. Maybe around that, yeah. Breathe through the pain and they drop them. Like you would in the bathroom. You stink. I love cheerily angry and hateful Marcy. God, how many more steps are there? It's not that many episodes since Al was the good player, Kill and Payne were the bad ones. It can be unanimous or out loud. We don't care about winning, spoken like a Bundy. Why pay? He knew it was her. Can we see a menu first? Now kids, before we vote, may I share a little rhyme I learned when I was both your ages? D is for the many pies I made for you. A is for the apple in my eye. D is for the dish you ate the pie in. D is for the apple in my eye. Why? Because I love you. Put them all together, they spoon. I'm old and I stink. Opposing team. I love Al's speech. The dance show. It's ranked 13. Honestly, I think I'd place it 25 lower. And yeah, you know, if you've watched the other ones of the other videos in this series already probably not surprised I don't like homophobic jokes in this episode. Let's dance. So much more coherent than Trump. A Kutessa. Sit down, heel. They were eating. Feed me, Peg. And he stands looking at the window like a dog waiting for its owner. I haven't done it in two years. I haven't danced in 12 years. <coughs> Excuse me. Or feed me two something. I just want to be part of the food chain. Bikers, big ones, full of sperm. And Al Bundy meets Homer Simpson. It's warm. Kelly bounces back. It's ranked 21. I agree with that. I love this episode. Yep, that's a soap, all right. Can a man really father a child while in a coma? I think there have been two reported cases. Ah, so now, out of high school, she is to get a job. That's reading, honey. So what's the problem? I am a model. I'm okay, Daddy. I hit the mat behind the couch. Don't dine with the Trumps. Al, they're too hateful even for you. I can do it at Will. And Will is a big fan. Walking behind him, his socks. Resplendent in their no-toe-or-heel no look. Can you be a car? You just stand here and car. 400 bucks. <laughs> like you do your name? I feel like I died and went to dad's happy box in the basement. <laughs> Peppy Le Pew.
but shows her the Bundy bounce and she's like, that's way more than I needed to know. They're not even watching Kelly. Maybe she needs to fire an arrow at an apple. You're not my mommy. I'll try to fast forward commercials. Can't. He's watching live TV. How could she find out? <laughs> With swift and blinding violence. Adults instead of stick figures. Great fight. It really looks like she, yeah, really puts her hurting on. Yeah. Stage fight. Yeah, I mean, fright. The one who, oh, what's that word there? Told about the Bundy bounce was see other hand and sucker punches him. Seriously, he didn't even, the least he could have done was like admit it when she was like, how, how did she find out? You know, yeah, but yeah, quite like that. Great ending. Married with Aliens. I was surprised this episode came this early because it's such a wacky episode. And it's ranked 29. I agree with that. It is that good. We have been arguing like this. <laughs> Everyone's relative. Hello, Al's recounting of how he got hurt. Well, did you get the quarter? Wear a helmet next time you go a coin hunting. I love the aliens. Before the underpants gnomes, you had the sock aliens. You need medical attention. Now go to sleep. Drum care and practice. I'd expect the Klingons to bring the gach, not the chips. One thing happens in five years, and I'm not supposed to talk about it. <laughs> And it blows in the rain. And they go wild over the socks in the hamper. They sucked out his internal organs and they took some Polaroids and said he was a darn good sport. There is no such thing as too many Weird Al references. Your father may be going away. Ha ha, ho ho, he he. Does that sound like the ramblings of an idiot? <laughs> He's nothing without his calculator. And he leaves a trail of socks. And Peg looks so concerned about him. They have to be used, huh? And they turn out to be bigger hams than the enemy soldiers and spy missions of the early Medal of Honor games. The posing next to Peg is very war with the fnools. That might actually be an intentional reference. All that's missing is a glass of liquor. You know, it is right, you got the cigarette. We don't need the whole song. <laughs> Neither do we. It's not every day. It's not. Oh, right, not the exact job title, at least. Mad dogs, they shoot horses too, don't they? I love how they clearly do understand English. I love the importance of Al's socks at the end, complete with a Star Wars y text crawl. Wabbit season. This is ranked 39. I might rank it even higher. I love this episode. One of my absolute favorite episodes. Eating all that cheese. Maybe you got it from a toilet seat. M I N E D. When you had Kelly. Making fun of dad here. I love Al listing what he's going to grow. Farmer Iggy's Almanac. Absolutely love Keen Choice O'Dads. I love Farmer Al. Even if I have to kill every living thing on the planet. Typical conservative. I want what I want and I don't care who it hurts. And Kel thinks the Looney Tunes cartoons are documentaries. And it does get increasingly Looney Tunes. I love Al's insane eyes. And Al steals pegs, because, of course, hers, hard hat. In his defense, no way he was affording her any protection resting atop her tall hair like that. Very Marge Simpson. And even Buck has bandages, and the bunny jumps onto the couch. 
That's all, folks. If dynamite was dangerous, do you think they'd sell it to an idiot like me? What's he doing now? Well, he's got the flamethrower, he's aiming at the hole, he shoots, and misses. Excuse me. Garden on fire? Yep. And so is Mrs. Rhodes' fence. Whoa, look at her big tree go. Well, at least he didn't shoot himself in the foot. Give him a minute. Old McGundy had a farm, B-U-N-D-Y, and on this farm there was no wife, B-U-N-D-Y. With no wife here, and no kids there, and hooker come down on Friday nights, with big delicious orders of pizza and a beer there. Old McGundy had a farm, B-U-N-D-Y. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting rabbits. Now, Daddy, I've been watching shows about rabbits. Don't put the barrel in the hole or else he'll tighten a knot and shoot you in the face. Or he might make it curvy and make it come out a hole behind you and shoot you in the butt. On the bright side, my house is dry again. But then the sun would have dried it out, seeing as there's no roof. Really? We have two. One for every wall in my room. Oh, Mr. Wabbit, come and get a tasty carrot. Well, at least he didn't shoot himself in the foot. Oh, give him a minute. Do you think I'm sexy? And this is rank 46, and yeah, it's a great episode. Excuse me. The Bundies. Yeah, tell a straight man who's attracted to you that he's manly, he's yours. That's why grown-ups have kids. Fried bud. Spell it! English mother effort, do you read it? And she gets a book. <laughs> I wonder who he is. If they can get the eggs for free. Other people will too. Yep, confidence is a huge part of it. Al Inferno or an Alpocalypse. Hi Al. Shut up. Can we, Peggy? Can we? <laughs> and he flirts with customers. And Jade again, fourth and last time. And he transforms before our very eyes. Classic Wolfman style. Now you're sure the power's off for the thousand. So Thousandth time, yes, the power's off. Zzz. Spell off. Spell it. Oh, something. <laughs> Al, you're late coming home. What happened today? The shoe store closed hours ago. Where have you been? Walking around, thinking. The reason why I'm late is, well, this beautiful, very beautiful girl came into the shoe store today. As I was helping her try on some shoes, she asked me to fly away to the Greek islands with her. Well, did you go, Daddy? Yes, Pumpkin. I'm sorry I didn't get to say goodbye. That's okay. Anyway, all this girl wanted was a love toy. Yeah, I know the feeling. Oh, please. The only feeling you know is Buck's fur against your cheek on a warm summer night. It was every man's fantasy. Be kept by a young wealthy woman whose skirt is as short as the lifespan of the man she chooses. But I said no. Why? <laughs> well, because I just realized that everything I've been doing up to now, the bathing, the toothbrushing, changing of the socks, being nice to people, trying to succeed, it's all for nothing. All those things are designed to attract. Why should I be attracted? I'm married with children. Which is also the show summed up in, yeah. One down, two to go. It's ranked 154. Do you like to be spanked? Well, that got Bud's attention. That was Buck's mother. 
No, I got a brother named. And he just never gets it. That's They do that three times, and he does not get it. Hi, I'm Jake. We're going to Kelly's room. Hold my calls. I will always love Al beating up Kel's dates. She has the right that I'm an adult. I love Kel's attempts at asserting herself with the not breathing. Those rules are made by the man. I have money. I've got $246. Could you borrow your little dad some money? That's way more than he has. I didn't see you helping. And Bud seriously threatens Peg with a punch to get her out of hugging him. At least you're eaten. No longer appears on any map. I'd rather die off the Sears Tower into a huge pile of thumbtacks. Nicely done, bud, on escaping with a, via bedsheet tightrope. Today on Oprah, into the path of a speeding truck. You should have believed her, Sam. Big gulp cup, or she's selling her body for Pez. Marcy, you're making me crave Pez. Child Kel is adorable and hilarious. She was always dressing like that, and look how proud she is to have ridden Cat again. I brought you something, Pez. <laughs> it's the air conditioning, Daddy. Move over, Kelly. I love him making the sandwich. And yeah, we think what Al thinks, a sugar daddy. Cold cuts like there's no tomorrow. Meet Brooke, my roommate. You killed my daddy. <laughs> Kel can make female friends? Does Brooke not know who she is? Ah, uh, we'll let the butt out. Neutering doesn't do a damn thing. I was just scaring off the cat that keeps calling here. Thanks, dog boy. My left eye still wanders from the last time. So does Forrest Whitaker's. And Jake beats himself up. I do believe I've outdone myself. I love that the title legitimately is Al ecstatic that there's now only two awful relatives for him to get out of the house so he can be happy. The wife and the boy, Buck, but something. And baby makes money. This is ranked 77. Maybe we should have crossed out mom and dad. Soon enough, Kel. Soon enough. And the hat rests atop Peg's hair. Why did it have to be him? Was that convincing, Peg? You're not coming back. And they're gone. Okay, it's Zelda Spellman. Hey, I was a teenager, and she was cute. Well, Zelda. In this episode, Zelda 2, but, you know, obviously referring to Sabrina. And so, in Legacy, I, Stymie C. Bundy, leave you the last surviving male Bundys. Proof that a... Yeah, proof that a male Bundy can achieve great success. Did I mention that I never married? Well, regardless, I'm certain that you have all become successful in your own ways. Iggy Bundy, I'm sure you became the astronaut you dreamed of. Lester Bundy, I'm sure you achieved your goal of becoming a brain surgeon. Eugene Bundy, I wonder if you ever achieved your goal of becoming bank president. I did. <laughs> and last, and certainly least of the bunch, Al Bundy. Al, get your hand out of your pants. You were always the loser. You never really had a dream, but I only hope that you had the sense to dump that wild redhead who stole my wallet. Wait, Bundy men have hopes of becoming successful or being, for being smart? You know, not sports and other such, yeah. I love the other Bundy men, their appearances, and yeah. 
Man, Peg was a horrible mother to infants. Really dark and messed up. Mike Tyson, just don't let him nibble your ear. Collecting smells for the poor. Ringing in about a minute. One remote control. And that money shall be mine. Not ours, but mine. Conservative. Hey, Daddy, what you doing? Nothing you need to know, Pumpkin. Ah, home pregnancy test. Let me show you. Now, you need to fill the dropper to the line, and then shake the mix with the anti-HCG conjugate, put it back into the stand, add the litmus key, and if the test area, not the control area, turns blue, then you have a positive reading. Uh, I saw per the professor do it on Gilligan's Island. I love Cal's answers to m what more could a girl want. What if they do have another baby? It'll be so confusing. I mean, what'll that be to me? A tutor. I would have been the one who was able to read. And he's in a wheelchair. Just don't get shot. <laughs> Baron, oh, that's misogynist. Mom's been taking him. <laughs> uh huh, you don't say. Leave me. Unlock the door, unlock my door. <laughs> the ending is really messed up. What Al is doing to Peg is so much worse than what she did to him. Married with who? And it is ranked number 70, and I'd say it's that good. <clears throat> and it's probably also one that, like, if you don't watch it, you'd probably be kind of confused, you know, with who, yeah, where Jefferson came from. Great opening. Can we have some privacy and income the kids? Al, this is sex. Leave it to those who do it. And all I got... <laughs> Doesn't that mean you didn't get married? If all you got... Yeah. Alright. Come on, sweetie. Let's go back to bed. Bye, Daddy. <laughs> Good feeling about our marriage. What'd you say your name was again? What the hell is he doing? Marcy Darcy. I now have the name of a cartoon character. Yes, I intentionally shortened that line. Oh, please. They're too drunk so I haven't brushed their teeth yet. And you have the dream sequence. Who says Al and Peg never do anything together? I love the two Bundy's ideas for spending the two grand. Did you know there's a rain cloud specifically above your house? Especially since I got caught. <laughs> exactly. Charades. Sometimes they really love doing stuff together. And the guests for the kids are there. She doesn't love you anymore. Who died? Hey, unlike your sister, at least he cares enough to be here. I can't hear you. I do. But is so happy with his drawing. Kids, turn on the sprinklers. Wedding's over. Wedding twink. Around this lake. Well, Al, what goes around comes around, eh? If you can read this, you're already dead. I love the, the whole sequence of them at the lake. Man, that fake arm stood out right from the start. By the way, my name's Jefferson. I'm Marcy. Yeah, I'm Al. So now that the Beatles have been re reunited, can you, you can get the hell out of here. Listen, Al, I just dropped by to thank you for utterly betraying my trust. It was malicious and foul, but 
I think it's going to turn out to be a blessing. I mean, it helps get our marriage off to an honest, healthy, harmonious start. Jefferson Darcy, get your lion inmate ass over here now. It's just that I can hardly believe that I'm now Mrs. Darling. What's your last name? Darcy. Marcy Darcy. I'm now Marcy Darcy. What have I done? Maybe I should start wearing little dresses with dots on them. Hey Jefferson, what did you do with the land you, the, in prison? I sold some land off Lake Chickamauga. Yeah, the lake. Yeah, the place is so polluted and won't be fit for inhabitants for over 20 years. I saw a woman come over here. Are one of you my wife? Come on, sweetheart, let's go back to bed. Bye, Daddy. <laughs> no, 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 no. You've made a mistake. I'm your wife. Now we can go back to bed. Oh, shut up. It's me. It's me. Yeah, we're having a wedding, so we need about two pounds of cold cuts. What is your cheapest stuff? Yes, I will take the beaks and claws. I still think 12 cents a pound is damn steep. I'm married and I don't know a thing about my husband. Who cares who he is? Look at him, he's gorgeous. I say settle up and settle up right and if he breaks a leg, shoot him. The Godfather. And it's ranked 12, yeah, it's definitely one of the best. And he comes in with the steering wheel. Dear maggots and foul bureaucrats. They'll never check. Shut up, bud. He's not that old. And out come the money. And elbowed in the stomach. Daddy, you were the best. Even the operator ranks are fun. Am I truly nothing? Could the neighborhood children be right? And they're already drilling. I knew I could do it. Have a banana, Al. Well, then why did you want me to call you father? Never mind that now. You really can't believe that, Peg? Mayor in law. It is a pleasure to serve our neighbors. Now, and they have a closet full of bread now. All these years, we thought that you would be the success in the family. Boy, was I wrong. But keep getting those good grades. It'll really pay off in the real world. And they laugh. It's just that Kelly's her favorite now. That's all. And he's old Don Corleone. And the Godfather score plays. Hands still firmly down pants. We get the Corleone monologue from the start of the first Godfather. Kill him. Small potatoes. What are you saying, Al? I'm saying pass the small potatoes. I'll tell you this. I'm not letting you take me. I'm not letting you take me fishing. Life is good, but not for me. <laughs> Look, Pay. More photos on page six. Case of rum, case of rum, that's one I always say. This one is single. No, you don't say. There's no way to ever find out, Al. Yep, what goes around comes around. It really, if they had treated Bud better, then, yeah, it, it always manages to, it really, the show is big on karma sometimes. Look who's barking. It's ranked 240. I'd place it 40 or higher. And Buck speaks again. I love Cheech Marin as Buck. That was my first exposure to Cheech Marin's. Yeah, however you pronounce it. So, you know, later seeing him in Desperado and From Dusk Till Dawn was, yeah, you know, finally have a face to put to with that voice. 
getting gassed at the pound. Okay, I'll feed the dog. Oh no, not the girl! <laughs> I, I just... He's one of my favorite voices on the show. Just the, the level of, of passion and when he sounds like when he's trying to be charming and when he sounds really horny and all this stuff just yeah he's he's so good you know Christina Applegate has does some of the best facial expressions along with of course Ed O'Neill and Katie Seagal and and you know David Faustino especially when he's like looking especially pathetic or trying to be charming and you know I love the I am not a troll dance but yeah, I Cheech Marin, one of the favorite voices. Uh, yeah, and she didn't sleep at home, of course. Great blues. Look at the two pairs of legs on that one. <laughs> it's a cute little turn of phrase because that you know, yeah, we say look at the pair of legs on this. Yeah, I'd rather live two bathrooms. Aw, Buck's got a girlfriend. No more dad's shoe for you? No, from now on they're both yours. <laughs> Jefferson's already doing well with Marcy and Al comedy-wise. Uh, take a shower. They really are rude to Americans. Dad, you're spitting on me. Buck, somersault. Say what? <laughs> Why don't you just ask me to drive a car? Look, you want a paw? I can do that. Here, paw. <laughs> Look how stupid Bug is. <laughs> yeah, it's a holdover from a few days ago. And she slams the door in Hans's face. You can watch me eat it, Daddy. <laughs> If I had a gun and a thumb, you'd be dead. As high as you got tossed. Man, the last bit of the blues song is misogynist. This is a horrible hoax. This isn't an authentic ch Chuck Cheese bun. Cherry cheesecake. You went to the wrong place. I don't think there are a lot of Chuck Cheese bowls in Tanoose, Wisconsin. Just a bells and a holler from Wanker County. Well, we met so many nice people who said wise things like, I got my own teeth. Yeah, and uh, I'll trade you my sister for your big glider. Oh, yes, we had such a nice time. We must show you the slides of me getting fondled at the gas station by something that was half man, half owl. Dad, they met Cousin Moody. <laughs> that is almost like Adam's family level of, yeah. That's not that short of Cousin It. Well, we're back. We got it. You wouldn't believe the trouble and shuts the door. <laughs> Do you know what hell we went through to get you that cheesecake? We had to make a two-day trek through the backwoods of Wisconsin's cheese country. Living off cheese wine, nibbling on cheese bread. Having to make cheap cheese love. And we almost got lost a thousand times. Well, that's why I sent Peg with you as our guide. As a guide. Yeah, thanks so much for sending your wife on our honeymoon. Without her playing pinochle with us every night, we don't know what we would have done. Well, once again, Dad is gone where no cartoon character has dared to go. Yow! Oof! Jeez, there must be a dead man in there. Oh boy, you know, there's no mistaking real cheese. And you know, Pumpkin, they aged this cheese six months. Where? In the belly of a bear? <laughs> I must fetch my cheese goggles. Now, you two may admire it, but don't touch it. This cheese means more to me than both your lives. A man's castle. And it is ranked... 84, and yeah, it's at least that good. Your little boy is eating again. And they pat Peg down for food. Something with letters. 
that aren't even in alphabetical order, which I suspect is only of use to those who can read. I don't want to talk about you. Every country you go to, there's always a word for man. Wow. And the bathroom was all messed up. And the heartbeat intensifying. Hey, new guy, what are you in for? A bathroom is not a room. Yes, it is a room. It says so in the title. Bathroom. I will not bend. I will not break. I will not sit. I will not make. Hey, you wait a minute, guys. I know I'm the new guy here and it's not my place to speak up, but what are we doing? We're men. We were put on this planet to... Well, I don't know but what we're put on this planet to do, but we're here, damn it. We're Americans. We have the right to use the best toilet system in the free world. Are we to use the gas station bathroom like some common ruski? We're being driven from our homes, room from room, running like a Frenchman from a cap gun. And from whom? From our women. They've taken our closets, driven us out of our bedrooms by their very nakedness. Now you guys can take it, but not this Yankee Doodle Dandy. Tonight, I'm reclaiming my toilet bowl. And all night security, dude. And it's ranked 52, and I'd have to say it's actually, yeah, that's, that's quite accurate. You civilians don't understand. Surely you can laugh at the idea of a man who makes no money losing his job. No one don't call me Shirley. I don't get it. Am I now the man I laughed at as a child? The show summed up in one line. Dad, this girl really likes me. No, listen, we straight guys really are that stupid. Not the story. <laughs> we shot him. My knee was not down. Did you have your knee down? You're god darn right I did. Man, these kids are good. Nice job on the branded sequence. You stink. Gee, this must be someone who knows you. And spare tires, home life is as sad as Al's. Take a gander at my best socks. Well, the aliens took the good ones. Excuse me. The fight is great. On the count of three. Three. Good job on the guest, you know, guest, yeah, guest star as well. Nice run, Bundy. Nice. Nice hit, spare tire. We were two pretty good athletes back then, weren't we? Hey, we're still great athletes. I'm hurt real bad, you know. <laughs> Me too. I can't get up. Me neither. Sleepy time now? Oh yes. <laughs> it should have been mine, Bundy. Headlines should have read, Spare Tire Crushes Unidentified White Man on Goal Line. I was supposed to play college ball, but it never happened. You know why? Too stupid? Well, it was because after that game I fell into a deep depression. And it turned where too many players before me had turned to drown their shoulders. Pie. Come the trials, I can no longer make three points unless there was a pie on the floor. My career was over. You stole the glory that should have been mine. I had a little bit of glory, yeah. But you had pie and I haven't eaten in 20 years. I'll give you that trophy now for a piece of pie. So pardon me if I don't cry for you, Argentina. But I sell women's shoes and I'm married. Oh yeah? Well, I bet your mother-in-law doesn't look like this. No, my mother-in-law looks like this. Okay, okay. There were two final players. Yours truly, and a player from Andrew Johnson High. They called Spare Tire. Why? Because he was fat? No, because he wore one with a chain around his neck. 
You haven't asked that question before, though you've heard this story countless times, or are you just cumming him? Whoops. Meant to do that. Oldies but youngins. Oops. Yeah. And it is ranked nine. And yeah, I it's it's about that good. I really love this episode. The struggle to find the song and really who hasn't been there? Like it they, they push it to an extreme, but seriously, who has not heard a song on the radio and the DJ refused to say what it's called? And it's like, I remember there's this one part I can't get it out of my head and just yeah. None of my family want to help. And none of the producers want another take of that. Why don't you tell him? And they're both into coffee. Say it with words. Trolls under my building. <laughs> yep, clearly Al is not mad. Pretty good angel devil joke. And poor Bucket gets hit by the book. This guy is a genius. Never heard it. <laughs> I really love Kel with Vinny. I think we're going to be great friends and crack went the vinyl. All I wanted was the thing in 45. The regular of the gun. I get this point and settle for the malt liquor. <laughs> One of my absolute all-time favorite quotes from the whole show. I got Rick Cool himself. Oh, Rick Cool, huh? Did Bobby 23 Skidoo quit? Al, the suspense is boring us. Tell us what he said. He said, the colors, the colors. Has anybody seen my good friend John? Then he lit up a banana and then he hung up. I'm not home. Then is it okay if I wait? Mom, if my mixed up theory at the hospital is correct, I'd say we just found Kelly's natural brother. I was thinking if we had trolls under our building. I mean, sometimes I hear noises. My dad says it's the pipes, but now I wonder. Look, I'm not a troll. I'm a boy, you idiot. We need hot lovers and other strangers. And it's ranked 73. It's that good. It is really sexist and misogynist too, though. I don't remember when meeting the president would be a big deal, not a great shame. Was this couch always here? <laughs> that really is great because, yeah, that couch has really always been there. That's, yeah. I mean, we've seen flashbacks where it was already there. So, you know, flashbacks to her childhood where it was already there. So, yeah, that is, that is remarkably stupid. And Al grabs the $100 check for Cal. One is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and the other meeting the president. And recycling. <laughs> Remember, you're all my vice presidents. Yep, that's how that kind of thing works. I believe we should stop the Lucian. There'll be plenty of other once-in-a-lifetime opportunities. Demonstrably false, Peg. Just taking a nap in traffic. Don't forget your jacket. <laughs> I love the label on the weenie top package. Mock food. And they won. You know, that would really have been like if if after all of that it still wasn't yeah. Spare me your pork scented lies. Someone mighty stupid and yeah, the the Darcy's of course. And Jefferson said yes. Until now, Jefferson had basically just been replacement for Steve. His background, laziness, and lack of class hadn't come up yet, so it was really I really appreciate this joke. Excuse me. Oh, that's better. 
Kel, stop talking. Man, the IRS were fast. Kel failed Pig Latin too. Now it's over. Aw, oh, at least he'll finally get some weenie tots. You can't win. You're ineligible since your microbrain daughter is now a weenie tot employee. We're gonna be poor for the rest of our lives. Bite on that weenie. And he knew to ask for money before saying that. Moving on. Kids, what are you gonna do? It's only 201 out of the, yeah, I'd rank it at least 50, maybe 70 higher. Oops. A lie? An owl beats a bug. <laughs> Turn on the lights! An owl's so happy for Bud. And Peg doesn't believe Bud had a date. And Kel wants money too. You and I are a lot alike, boy. Boy. Yeah, alike. Bud like fire. Bud like water. And Kelly hit the door. <laughs> she roller skated down the hill and home. And Buck runs off. And they took the Darcy's VCR when they take take whatever you want. Gotten over it by now. I didn't say one kid, I said one family. Those are great monster kids. They're really like they couldn't be much more awful. I lose my place in my book. Honk honk, very good transition. And she couldn't read a uh. Buck, who hasn't eaten in a thousand years. I love hearing their thoughts. Jefferson's, Jefferson's thoughts are really, really funny. Hey, Peg would want to see this. And Al's thoughts sing, and Peg sings some, and Jefferson and Marcy, and then all at once. <laughs> the way you leave this door open, a maniac could just walk in and kill you. Yeah, like I ever get what I want. You know, you and I are a lot alike. Boy, no, I've had sex. At least I have the decency to die at 13. Top of the heap. Or bottom of the barrel. This is ranked 262. Yeah, it is the worst one. Or wait, is it 262 or 3? But yeah, it's, it's one of the worst. Bottom, like, 2 or 3. Okay, throwing the cat out of the window was pretty funny. I do want to say, I don't hate the actors, and certainly Joey Lawrence is funny elsewhere, but the characters just aren't that compelling, and nobody likes backdoor pilots. It's, it's, uh, if, if we wanted to watch a pilot for Top of the Heap, we wouldn't be watching Married with Children. Damn Democrats. Wow. Yeah, that's... Where did I go? Not a bad ending. I never watched the show itself, so I don't know, but I guess the idea is that they continue to try to get into high society. This is the first episode of Meredith Jones, although I suppose it's not necessarily that, that I didn't like on this rewatch. Really, well, the, the first one I didn't love as well. Now, you better shop around. Part one of two. It's ranked five. Yeah, it's one of the very, very best. Go. Exposing yourself to water. He scares us all, honey. Not really. I was aiming for your father. We're all going to be cool. Even you, bud, for the very first time. Kids, you okay? <laughs> At the forefront of 1942 technology. Help me out with the car, I'll bring in the main part. Gee, Mom, thanks for the precious gift of life. He's down, Daddy. We'll know for sure if it quits after 10 seconds and asks what's on TV. 
You know, this could be you. I don't feel a thing. What do you feel now? Anger, despair, disappointment. It's gonna blow. Brrr. And they move into the supermarket. You remembered my birthday. Wow, that's sad. Potatoes. Now it's not quite what I'm looking for. Name's Bundy, Al Bundy. Velveeta Ann. Gillis is the underworld name for Cheese Booster. Poppy, what's come over you? I was your kindergarten teacher. Considering some kindergarten teachers, maybe that is, yeah. With Kelly standing next to the, the kid, I really thought she would be the one to distract him. I love Marcy's describing their activities. You dropped your eggs. And Al's face next to do not take checks from this man. Why don't you just announce it to the whole store? I really like Manager. I liked him on the Honey, I Shrunk the Kids TV show, too. And they assume the position. They've done that before. According to the IMDb trivia, during the scene with the pitchfork arm torch wielding mob attention, attempting to break into the Bundy house, the laughter from the studio audience was so loud and uproarious, Katie Seagal had to start over her speech, Well, Desert Fox, twice. Yeah, actually, yeah, you, you kind of see that in the take. The, the, yeah. Marcy, may I get in front of you? I only need to buy a stick of gum. Eat hot death, loser. Oh, the National Enquirer. Look at this. Steve Rhodes, Mary Sher. Where? Where? Yeah, excuse me. Kids were moving into the drugstore down the street. Buy something or you'll be moving into the county jail. Okay, peg, checkbook, cash only, Bundy, and I still want two forms of ID. Family meeting. Okay, give me all your money. 18 cents. When I asked you for money to buy a battery for the Kaiser, you said you didn't have a dime. No, we, see, we said we didn't give a damn. Oh, the whole neighborhood's gone dark. Well, at least they don't know it was our fault. Bundy did this. Bundy, Bundy. God, where do they get the torches and the pitchforks so fast? Hey, I was next in line. What are you complaining about? You still are. Better shop around part two. This is rank 18. I'm not sure why it's that much lower than the the than part one, but yeah, they both are incredibly funny. In your skulls. Aren't you Al Bundy? <laughs> and I know the foodies jingle by heart. I meant fair for foodies. Oh hey, Mr. Foodie did the voice for Falcor, Gmork, and Rockbiter in the original Never Ending story. Man, Al's bad at negotiating with Peg. I'll take a Peg push-up over an Al push-up any day of the week. No mercy. All oh, right, this is before Jefferson liked or even tolerated Al. Pillsbury shoe boy. The Bundy cart has a real Ben Hur thing going on. It doesn't wobble. Get these people of regulations, foodie cart. Yeah, what is with that? Is it really that much? of a hassle to, to yeah for for supermarket carts not to wobble attitude adjusters <laughs> Jerry Mathers I thought my mom's brother was Nate won't somebody please shoot me <laughs> they crossed out Gary Coleman from the celebrity chair 
and they splash oil under Darcy's cart. Viva la cart of death! And a boxing glove. And Marcy gets him to throw stuff into her cart. Imported water. Yep, that stuff is ridiculously expensive. You know, today that joke would be bottled water. Well, I guess imported is still even more. But, yeah. I've fallen and I can't get up. I love the sped up footage. Too much cheese in the cart can't go. Like with any living thing. Like with any living thing. That's how I meant to say that, yeah. And of course he gets impaled. You know, that's the... Yeah. <laughs> if, you know, what, if, if you intend to impale others, you will be the one to get impaled. Whatever that thing is. And the drink sprays out his chest. Can I have a woe bundy? Woe bundy. Drop dead, leg feet, eat dust, grow hair. <laughs> Can you settle a bet between my sister and me? She says you frittered away your money on cheap women and booze. I say it was donuts and cheap women. Look, here's 50 cents. It's all I have. Now please leave me alone. Just one more question. If all the autograph hounds will stay back for a minute. Did you ever think of teaming up with that Eddie Munster kid for the thoroughly pathetic tour of 91? Let's get this over with once and for all. I may have to earn a pathetic living by donning the cap of the beaver and appearing at supermarkets, but at least my father doesn't sell women's shoes. Golly, that felt good. Who is this blubbering mess? I don't know, I think he used to be Opie. Opie was Ron Howard, you fool. I was. No, I am the beaver. Can I have your autograph, Opie? Okay, that'll be two dollars. In advance. Ladies and gentlemen, it's certainly a pleasure to be here at Foodies, the store with great food and super low prices. Oh, merciful heavens, won't someone please shoot me? Somewhere, please, just put a bullet through the old beaver skull. And remember, the winner gets a thousand dollars shopping spree, which, incidentally, is more than I'm getting for this gig. Can it be true? Isn't there room on Match Game PM for another washed up celebrity? Am I truly lower than Charles Nelson Riley? Hey, Charles Nelson Riley was a mighty man. Route 666, Part 1. It's ranked 235. I'd say it's at least 50 better than that. I have searched my eyes to the bone. Peg, you do not want to touch the Playboys, especially ones that are already down Bud's pants. Kel is so happy, Peg, or what Kel would have wanted. Oh, it's like a babushka doll. I saw the money. Call me Jim. Al. You mean insumation and textualities. Of course, Bud gave it away. You should have told him you take him, then leave just a little early so he wouldn't know. L.A., we're going to Long Island. Can we go to Garfield House? Hey, you leave that cat's lasagna alone. So much littering. Gas station, I reckon. Bottle opener? Five dollars. And he drinks the whole thing, right in front of them, too. Al takes his shoes off, and a bird drops out of the sky. We should come in case you needed help. That's the trouble with asking for money. The whole neighborhood was dancing. Yeah, and I got it off him. Dog party. And...
and part excuse me yeah route 666 part 2 and it's ranked 197 I rank it at least 50 higher than that now I was not able to write notes for this I didn't watch it on my own PC because the threat of thunder so only MDB quotes where's daddy? gee I don't know I haven't seen him since he went insane oh here he comes I killed the squirrel for looking at my gold good work dad uh Al? I think Dad's shoe selling days are just about over. I think Dad's shoe wearing days are just about over. And in this latest news headline under the heading Isn't That Bizarre, today's story comes from New Mexico where an insane inbred family, a man with two wives and three sons, held up and robbed a group of tourists, leaving them with cash and diamonds. All the family said they wanted was gold. They reportedly stole an old Dodge from a prospector who looked like an old John Biner. They were last seen heading west towards Los Angeles. If you see any of them, do not approach them. They are insane, unbathed, and dangerous. What time is it, gang? Half five after three. <laughs> yeah, you take your victories where you can get them. When you're a Bundy. Buck the stud. There you go. And this is ranked 219. I'd rank it at least 20 higher, I'd say. Come on, Al. Is that the best you can do? Peg, I can't concentrate if you're going to keep shouting instructions. Not like that, you moron. Who taught you to do this anyway? All right, that's it. I quit. Have, haven't we done enough for one day? Oh, all right. At least you did something, and of course it wasn't sex. I hit a power wall over Peg. <laughs> they are actually sticking with Kel going to modeling school. It's, you know, rare to see actual consequences, so yeah. Oh, take me again. I didn't even know I was taking you then. I tripped on a box and I thought the furnace fell on me. Hey, it's Quark, doing a very fancy accent and non-creepy stature. So the other dog doesn't get his hand bitten. <laughs> and I can't stop reliving the football memory. Because I think I'm going to be hungry. I'm probably still thirsty. I know that look well. And the toast is ready when they're done. Good visual. It's like the toast was Al's... Yeah. And Al's looking at Play Dog. Me no understand wheel. Wanna buy some shoes? Well, from where I'm standing, the brain has been picked clean and the head doesn't have any hair. Ah, to be young again. And a robot. Can you play baseball anymore? I can't speak for Al. The satisfied look on Peg's face does that. And Buck drags Al. And back again. And back another time. Daddy, if it'll help, you can have my cut of the $10,000. Oh, I'll miss you most of all, Scarecrow. Let's burn him. Yeah. Yeah, so that's it. As usual, I hope this has been as fun for you as it has for me.